When talking about lighting, no one ever focuses on the impact shadows can have on the design of your shot. Hey, what's up? I'm David Aryev, and I'm a 3D motion designer and educator, and I'm gonna help you make your renders better. In this video, you'll learn how to use invisible planes to flag off lights and create areas of shadow, use props to create shadows from off camera, add gobo patterns to lights, alter the quality of shadows by either choosing hard or soft shadows, and create shadows with fog volumes and VDBs. If you want more ideas to improve your renders, make sure to grab our PDF of 10 tips in the description. Now let's get started. As much as we need to think about lighting with area lights to improve our renders, we also need to think about crafting our shadows and acting like a DP would on set by flagging lights and creating interesting shadow patterns to guide the eye or just add detail and make it feel like there's a larger world off camera. Here's one of the easiest ways to create shadows. Just make a plane that's invisible to camera with a black texture on it. Now as you move it around, it acts like a flag to the lights so you can design your shadows more intentionally. Here in this recent ice scene I built, I felt that the foreground was distracting and everything had too much light, so I threw the foreground into shadow to lead the eye more naturally into the shot. Here's an outdoor scene with some nice strong sunlight, but just by adding an off-camera tree, we can bring in some shadows to add patterns and detail and create that dappled sunlight look. We can also do the same kind of thing by putting an alpha channel into a plane. Or if we want to add in some shadows that track with the light itself, then we can place a texture into it here in the distribution slot. And as we scale the light down smaller and smaller with surface brightness off so that the light doesn't get darker as we scale it down, we'll see the shadows sharpen up. Just search for gobo pattern on Google and you'll get a ton of great results. Here's a subtle example from an amazing video called Memories of Australia, which was actually created in Unreal Engine. Notice how much life this slight shadow animation adds to the shot. We also want to pay attention to the quality of our shadows. Soft shadows happen with large sources and hard shadows are created with small sources. The sun actually acts like a small source because it's so far away and takes up a very small area of the sky, but it's bright enough for the light to reach us. So if you want to mimic a sunlight without using an actual sun, then you need a pretty small but very bright source. And an HDRI to fill the shadows more naturally here with blue bounce light. And it helps to push the light way back so the shadows get more parallel just like the sun. Or you could take a large light source and just push it very far away and make it very bright as well. You can see here if we have the area light closer we've got soft shadows but as we move it further back and brighten it up the shadows get much more sharp. With characters like Bumble Mouse here soft shadows often look much nicer than hard ones do. We can also create shadows with fog volumes or VDBs which will mimic what clouds do naturally. Or if you don't have access to those, then just some spheres high up in the scene could work as well to create patches of light and shadow. For example, here's a fog volume I created for this Megascans macro scene. Here's the ground before and after. Without the patchy fog and just pure haze instead, we flatten out all the light and the whole scene is in shadow. We could push the volume back to get the foreground into sunlight, but that creates too harsh of a transition. But here, when we've added the patchiness to the fog, we get that dappled sunlight effect where there are areas of light and shadow throughout the scene, and it's much more interesting to see. God rays are actually another form of shadow. They're just light broken up into a volume. Like here in this environment I designed for a Dead Mouse music video recently, I put a bunch of spheres off camera animating with a random effector, and that caused the light to break up and these god rays to shine down onto the environment. Here's a final example of some concert visuals I created for the K-pop group Big Bang, and literally all I'm doing is animating a box in front of the key light to create some sweeping shadows. This brings so much more visual interest to the shots. And here you can see the setup where it's literally just a cube that's rotating back here to cast shadows. It's crazy just how putting objects in front of a light can make such a huge difference. By keeping these tips in mind, you'll be well on your way to consistently creating awesome renders. If you want to learn more ways to improve your renders, make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when we drop the next tip.